This will be an interesting video because we will have to review how to create the equation of the line through points. They ask us to evaluate the double integral of y cube. Let's uh, remember it's like z equals y cube. This is a surface floating in the air, in the space. But d is a triangular region bounded with three lines which we'll need to find using those three vertices. Picture. In these problems, it's hard to operate without a picture. And wait till you get into polar coordinates. It gets harder from there. <laughs> so let's see. Let's put all the points. 0 and 1 is somewhere over here. 7 and 0 is here. And 1 and 1 somewhere. 1 and 1 is here. 1 and 1. Do you see this triangle? It looks like this. Here's a triangle region in 2D. So it's the base of the cake and this Z is the top of the cake basically. Floating above this triangle. <sighs> now we need to find the equation of the lines. Do you remember why? Because we need to figure out left minus right case or top minus bottom case. Uh, which we just learned for integration. So, for now, we definitely can see that if this is x and this is y, we first need to choose um, the scenario, which case are we going to do, uh, the dx case or dy case. So that's what I just mentioned, left minus, oh, top minus bottom versus right minus left. Here, I definitely see that this side is always on the right and this side is always on the left so it's going to be case 2 sometimes they call it type 2 type 2 depends on the book basically right minus left versus top minus bottom that means that x will be between functions which is exactly my right minus left. You always do larger minus smaller. Why y will be between numbers. Let's call it a1 and a... No, let's not call it a1. Let's call it y1 and y2. That is smarter. So that's basically what I mean when I'm saying case 2 or type 2. Case 1 or type 1 will look like this. Everything is on the top or, and everything is at the bottom. Here it's not the case because of this point, as you can see. One line is on the top and another line is on the top and then green is at the bottom. You could break it over here and make two double integrals, but that is harder. So, let's proceed. Y is already known. Y is from 0 to 1. So that was pretty simple. My Y is running from 0 to 1. So we are going to put this into the integral. The hard part is to figure out what kind of functions we should have for the x. And these are two functions. This L1 and green L2. We need to build equations of those two lines. So L1 is the equation at, uh, of the line going through 1, 1 and uh, 7, 0. You remember how to build the equation of the lines. You don't. That is bad. Should I remind you this? I don't know. I guess I can since I'm going to do it anyways. So, you first, let me put it in black color. You first find a slope. That is going to be your x2 minus x1. Oh. Well, yeah. Let me write down like this. This is my x x1 and x2. This is my y, y1 and y2. Slope is change in y over change in the x. Second one minus the first one. So it's going to be 0 minus 1 over 7 minus 1, which is minus 1, 6. We do expect it to be negative because as you can see L1 is decreasing. y minus y sub 0, whatever you want, 1, any point actually is good. Slope x minus x sub 0. You can use any point now. It's just, it will still work. 
Y minus which one do you want? I like the one with zero, I guess. Zero equals minus one six x minus seven. So I used the second point. This one. Simplify y equals minus one six x uh, plus seven six. Let's speed up a little bit for the second line because I don't want it to take forever in the video. So the green line in blue goes through two points. Zero, one. I like zeros. Zeros are good. And seven, zero. Okay, this one maybe is faster. Slope will be minus one over seven, right? Zero minus one. One and seven minus zero. Nice. And then y minus 0 equals minus 1 7 x minus 7. Simplified to minus 1 7 x plus 1. This is my second line. Okay, so my x is running between those two lines. Do you see any problem here? I will show you. Well, if I'm asking, probably there is a problem. So let me show you what I mean. Step 1. We draw the picture and we chose the type of the integral. Step two, we found limits of integration for one and for one variable and another variable. Step three, start writing down the double integral and you will see the problem. Double integral, the function they gave us goes inside of that integral, which is z equals y cube. y cube, we chose dx to be running between functions, so dx goes inside. Numbers should go outside. dy goes outside. y, as we learned, is running from 0 to 1. x, as we learn, is running from this function. No, actually we do, from right to left. So let's make sure we are correct. L1 is on the right. You always go from larger to smaller one. L2. That one is on the left. Let me check again. The scanning looks like this, from right to left, from right to left, from right to left. L1 is on the right. So we're going to have L1 on the top, L2 at the bottom. But the thing is that the equation here should be x equals x equals dx, right? And we don't have x equals, as you can see. For the case 2, you need to do one more extra step in to solve for x. And it's not very hard. Just move 1 and uh, multiply by minus 1 7. It will be minus 1 7 y plus 7 for the second line. And this one, x equals move 7 6 and multiply by minus 6. It will be minus 6 y plus 7. So these will be used for the limits of integration. Make sure that your integral makes sense, because you're not supposed to have x squared plus 5 over here, or anything about x. It should be everything about y, because x equals blah 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 of y. Okay, now we know. The right one was the one at the top, minus 6y plus 7, and at the top I mean it's upper in my notes, not at the top of the graph. And then the one that was smaller was minus 7y plus 7. See, building the integral actually is the hardest part. And after this, integration is easy peasy. Well, not always, just at the beginning of this chapter. y cubed times x, a bar, minus 7y plus 7, minus 6y plus 7, dy. Some people don't even put parentheses, so as you can see, I'm not always putting parentheses for dy. Plug uh, everything x and x into my y cube x. That will give me y cube minus 6y plus 7. Actually, I will not factor out. I will keep it like so. y cube minus 7y plus 7 because now I have to distribute dy. See, you don't have to put parentheses or brackets for dy case, uh, for the dy integral. Some people do this, but actually integration sign at the beginning says integration starts and dy says this is where integration ends. 
So distributing minus 6y to the 4 plus 7y cube plus 7y to the 4 minus 7y cube dy. Let's see. Something looks like cancels out, which is very nice. And then it all collapses into y to the 4. Very nice. dy. y to the 4 gives you y over 5. y to the 5 over 5 from 0 to 1. This is 5, not s, which is just 1 5th minus 0. So the answer is 1 5th. What did we do? We found a volume. What kind of volume? A volume of the 3D object that has a lead y cube shaped in 3D and the bottom, like bottom, the base of the cake is a 2D shape, which is a triangle. What kind of triangle? Uh, this kind of triangle. So you can imagine this goes up to the 3D there's like a floating shape at the top. And that's what we're doing here. We're working with volumes. Double integrals give us volumes. Good job for watching and go ahead, check your algebra. If you messed up, redo it. Good luck.